Please be seated. <clears throat> Good afternoon. I am Rita Knazel, Provost at the College of St. Benedict and St. John's University. It is indeed my great pleasure on this glorious day to welcome all of you, the families, friends, honored guests, faculty, and staff, but especially the 2011 graduating class of the College of St. Benedict. <clears throat> we welcome you to the 96th commencement exercise at the college. I would like to begin by introducing the members of today's platform party. On my left is the president of the College of St. Benedict, Dr. Mary Ann Benninger. Next to her is Beth Dindorf, chair of the Board of Trustees. Next is our commencement speaker for today, Dr. Laura McGrain. Associate Professor of American and British Literature at Haverford College and a 1991 alumna of the College of St. Benedict. And next to her is Dr. Joe Desjardins, Vice Provost at the College of St. Benedict and St. John's University. On my right is the Prioress of the Order of the Sisters of St. Benedict, Sister Nancy Bauer. Next to her is President-elect of the Alumni Board, Judy Zimmer. And to my far right is Jessica Gensel, Director of Campus Ministry at the College of St. Benedict. I now invite Jessica to the podium to give the invocation. Let us pray. God, on this day, let us pray for these young women, the 2011 graduates of College of St. Benedict, for their friends and family who offer unconditional love, and our Catholic and Benedictine community who continues to support them in this new beginning, this new beginning which you have quietly been forming, waiting until they were ready to emerge. And now the delight with their courage kindled, they take their first steps on new ground. A new rhythm of life begins. Though the destination may seem unclear, may they find hope in you and trust in the promise of a new dawn, unfurling their hearts into the grace of beginning. May the integrity of their intellect be true light challenging one-sided certainties and half-truths, illuminating the depths of your divine wisdom. We pray that their soul senses the world that awaits, giving them the courage to discover what the unknown yields, standing on the cusp of change where faith and reason meet. May they live a faith whose social manifestation is compassion and whose public expression is justice, building a society for the common good, a society that honors the dignity of persons. May these young women make their power felt through love, discovering the deeper meanings of all things and the sacredness of the life entrusted to them. May they go forth guided by your grace and let their light shine. Amen. Good afternoon. Greetings to parents, grandparents, family members, distinguished guests, sisters of the Order of St. Benedict, Greetings to the faculty and administration of College of St. Benedict and St. John's University and to members of the platform party. And greetings most especially to the College of St. Benedict class of 2011. <laughs> my, 
Well, for the past seven years, I have awakened on the morning of commencement and used the day, often the sunrise, to draw inspiration for my greetings to each year's graduating class. Most of these commencement days have had a sunrise. And I must confess, the weather this spring, and even today's weather, has made it harder to draw inspiration. But I have found inspiration in this groggy, slow spring. I know you're familiar with the phrase, stop and smell the roses. Well, there are no roses yet, and at this rate, who knows when they'll come out. But because of the cool air, we still have tulips, and they're bright, and they're firm, and they're strong. The weather has slowed them down, placed them in kind of a suspended animation. I think the cool, slow birth of spring this year needs to be a metaphor for us, for you, the class of 2011, about what you need to do in your life right now, whether it's for an hour, for a day, for a week, or for a summer. Just be. The sun will come out, but for now, just be. There are many attributes that characterize you as Bennies, but one of the most salient for those of us who know you is your drive. You even describe yourselves as driven when you respond to surveys. Your competence, your ability to get things done, and to get many things done at the same time is absolutely remarkable. I won't trivialize this grand talent you have by calling it multitasking. That word doesn't do justice to your versatility and to your talents. You've achieved many, many high-quality things simultaneously and sequentially during your years at College of St. Benedict. And for the past couple of months, you have been running nonstop to finish that thesis, to apply for grad school, medical school, or to apply for that first after-college job. You have been packing, moving, and celebrating and in the midst of all of it, you have been doing your regular work, attending classes, completing assignments and papers, taking exams, presenting your work, all the while working on, at camp, on campus or at internships, running events, leading and attending activities. And your planners and your iPhones and your Blackberries have every minute of your day accounted for. My message to you right now is to just stop. Stop if it's even for a short time. Think of this as the power nap for the rest of your life. Take whatever time you can spare and do intensely nothing. Be awake and aware, but don't check anything off your to-do list during that hour or day or week this summer. Don't just be in front of the TV or in front of Facebook. Just be with no external stimuli. Be present for yourself. If you can't stop your mind from working and you're not an expert meditator, then go into your head to the place in the world that you find most calming or replay in your mind the joyful memories of your time at College of St. Benedict. So this is your last assignment. We're going to practice right now. Close your eyes, take a deep breath, and do nothing until I tell you to stop doing nothing. A little different, isn't it, than what's been going on for the past few weeks? I know that you'll always be the doers in your life. That is the one, one of the glorious gifts of being a Benny. And I'm not asking you to stop being the most talented, competent, prepared, planful, fiercely intelligent, and committed woman in any situation you encounter. That is bred in your bones. But I am asking you to take moments for yourself, alone, 
times to let the spirit in, times to be, times to listen to the ear of your heart. You deserve nothing less. I offer you my heartfelt congratulations as we begin with great pride a celebration of all you have accomplished at College of St. Benedict. Congratulations. At this time, I have the pleasure of introducing the 2011 commencement speaker, Dr. Laura McGrain. Laura graduated from the College of St. Benedict in 1991 with a major in English and a minor in philosophy. She went on to complete her doctoral work at Stanford University in English and American literature. As a Rhodes Scholar, Laura conducted research at the Educational Policy Unit of the University of the Western Cape, Republic of South Africa. Laura currently serves as an associate professor, tenured associate professor, of American and British Literature at Haverford College in Pennsylvania. For those of you who might have noticed that her title in the, noticed her title in the program, I should note that Laura recently received tenure and was promoted, to assist, promoted from assistant professor to associate professor. So congratulations, Laura. In 2001, Dr. McGrain received College of St. Benedict's Decade Award with honors for an alumna for outstanding achievements in her chosen field and whose daily life reflects the Christian ideals and mission of the college. We are thrilled to welcome Dr. Laura McGrain back to campus today. It is now my great honor to invite Dr. McGrain to deliver the 2011 College of St. Benedict Commencement Address. Graduates of 2011, parents and friends, faculty, platform party, and President Benninger, thank you for giving me the opportunity to return to share your celebration today. When I left St. Ben's 20 years ago, I had spent a fifth of my life on this campus as an English major, an RA, a choir member, a student sharing in the intellectual and spiritual community that defines this beautiful Minnesota space, the splendor of which I can tell you never fades, even in the rain. Fast forward to today, 20 years later. Whew, I have spent only a tenth of my life here, and that proportion will continue to diminish. And yet, the impact of those experiences so much more palpably and powerfully shapes my life every single day. I think this inverse effect is tied to the roots that I put down here, the roots that have sustained, nourished, and kept me honest, even as I have traveled far away. I heard a few days ago that one of my CSB roommates when she found out that I would be giving the commencement speech today, said, and this, this is a person that used to eat frozen food, still frozen. <laughs> yep, it's true. In fact, I thought until a few years ago that it was called frozen pizza because that was how it was supposed to be eaten. And late at night, when nobody's looking, a frozen English muffin, accompanied by a frozen pea or two, still finds its way into my mouth. Anyway, as each of you celebrates today, I suspect that you're thinking a bit about your life trajectories, how you've changed or not in the past four years, where you've come from, and where your futures will take you 
geographically, professionally, personally, and spiritually. In honor of your quest, I want to take a moment to talk about a text that inhabits a very important part of the canon, one that captures this moment of metamorphosis, desire, craving, temporality, anxiety, rebirth, and transformation. A piece of fiction that reaches across disciplinary and global divides, a text that has been translated into French, Spanish, Russian, Chinese, and more. I hope that you will bear with me as I read to you a few pages. In the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up, and pop! Out of the egg came a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. He started to look for some food. On Monday, he ate through one apple, and he was still hungry. On Tuesday, he, or maybe she, ate through two pears, and she was still hungry. On Wednesday, she ate through three plums, and she was still hungry. On Thursday, she ate through four strawberries, and she was still hungry. On Friday, she ate through five oranges, and she was still hungry. On Saturday, well, let's just say that on Saturday, things get out of control. Cupcakes, pickles, pie and cake, high fructose corn syrup, nitrates, the works. And that night, she had a stomach ache. Now, I know that most of you are probably waiting for the finale, for that beautiful butterfly that caps the days of wandering, gluttony, and illness. But, as one of my children has reminded me, the title of Eric Carle's book is The Very Hungry Caterpillar, not The Very Beautiful Butterfly. Today, I encourage each of you to embrace the way of this slow and deliberate, sometimes muddled creature of imperfection, unending appetite, and becoming. And for those of you who still protest, or are still waiting for me to get to the ending about the butterfly, I have it on good authority that the way of the butterfly is rough. They get caught in nets, collected, pinned down, and put on display. And many, if not most, of the species live only a week or two, even when they do avoid capture. It would be disingenuous, of course, to suggest that society appreciates all of our creeping movements as we munch our ways along. We should fly along with confidence and brazen certainty. This clamor for airborne clarity is especially apparent each spring semester, which, for all the talk of blooming and birdsong, should really be subtitled The Season of the Resume. Perhaps some of you have encountered this page of reckoning, of shoveling and sanitizing the vast array of your experiences into the tidy black and white lines of a typed page, or two. Lines that include key objectives, skill sets, goals, and grade point averages. I personally lament the many erasures in this official document, the elisions of what has most mattered in my life and made me who I am, heady discussions of Heidegger in philosophy classes, epic failures, or as the kids say, epic fails, in the chemistry lab, an afternoon by Lake Sag reading James Joyce's portrait of the artist, embarrassing attempts at intramural volleyball, 
even those less savory but oh so memorable activities of Thursday and Friday nights. If only what happened at Sal's stayed at Sal's. <laughs> Or the real moments of labor, puzzling over a logic exam, detasseling corn in the fields of Iowa, squeezing fruit at an orange Julius in the mall. None of these things made it onto my resume as I was leaving CSB, and none of them, the quiet moments, conversations, frozen food, classroom epiphanies, are there now. Yet they're me, and they will be you as well. I've been experimenting, in fact, with the alternative resume. What would you include in your list of life? If you are not playing to your future employers and academic institutions, that magical ability to parallel park, a knack for darning socks, I would include an experience from my senior year abroad. I was living in London and writing my thesis on the English novelist John Fowles, who some of you may know as the author of *The Magus*, *The French Lieutenant's Woman*. In a fit of what I can only call procrastination, I dragged my then roommate to the train station to visit Fowles' town of Lyme Regis. Once there, we wandered to the cobbled street on which he lived, to the front door of his house. And then I thought, "What the heck?" And I knocked. This brilliant author opened the door. With the phone in his hand, asked us to wait a moment, hung up the phone, and invited us in for a cup of tea. He shook his head when I handed him my cheap and tattered volume to sign. He seemed tired and he looked old. I'd hoped we might talk about my essay. What else would I talk about? He told us that he had lost his wife to cancer earlier that year. That he had had a stroke. That where he used to have a thousand words for every idea, he now crawled through his vocabulary, looking for just one. His ruminations were daunting, sad, and beautiful. They'll always be with me, an echo of generosity and loss, a reminder not to get so lost in analysis. That we lose sight of our common human condition, and I heard those words because I meandered. Ralph Waldo Emerson, in an essay called *Circles*, notes that, and I quote: "People wish to be settled, yet only as far as they are unsettled is there hope for them. Life is a series of surprises." We do not guess today the mood, the pleasure, the power of tomorrow, when we are building up our being. But the masterpieces of God, the total growth and universal moments of the soul, He hideth. They are incalculable. End of quote. Our resumes, your resume, asks you to calculate dates, years, numbers, future promise. But the more authentic series are those composed of surprise, of the incalculable, of the wandering, and of the unsettled. Every year, <clears throat> my seniors at Haverford College interrogate me about how I ended up becoming a professor. Sheepishly, I tell them about the summer after my senior year at St. Ben's. I wasn't at a crossroads. A、uh, crossroads would suggest that I had a finite number of choices in mind, or that I was actually going somewhere. No, I was simply hungry and chewing and searching, and I got a call on a Friday afternoon from a little school in rural Camden, Mississippi. They had found me through a St. Ben's connection. A junior high school teacher could not get a visa from Africa. To come and teach, would I be interested in teaching science <laughs> and literature 
and music to junior high students in rural Mississippi. <clears throat> oh, and could I be there by Sunday night? Remember, this was Friday. I had a long talk with my dad. He's a smart guy. Even my mom thinks so most of the time. He listened, he thought, and then he said, you know, you can't really predict how things will turn out. But it sounds like you might be able to do a little bit of good and maybe learn something too. And it's probably more interesting to screw up doing something than to stay at home because you're afraid. So I went. The next morning, my dad took out an atlas. He drew a thick line with a yellow highlighter between Iowa and Mississippi. And I jumped into an old Toyota Corona. They don't make that model anymore, and that's a, that's a good thing. <clears throat> In the years that followed, I kept going to Oxford, England, South Africa, Stanford University, Vancouver, and now Haverford College. Now, my students look at me curiously when I use words like atlas. <laughs> and they're starting to look curiously when I use words like highlighter. <laughs> and when I tell them that I called home from the road on a payphone, and waited for letters to be delivered to an old mailbox on a country road. In this age of social media, Facebook, Twitter, GPS, Foursquare, it's sometimes hard to imagine life so unmapped and obscured. Sometimes, in fact, we become so obsessed with what we might be missing, how we are presenting ourselves for the public, and publicizing ourselves as always present, that we forget how to get lost, how to go off the grid. Now, I'm sure the butterflies are always tweeting, but I've told you about them. I wonder nowadays how my virtual posse would have responded had I posted on Facebook that I might head to Mississippi to teach 27 students, all of whom would turn out to be tougher than me, funnier than me, all for $100 a month and free gas. Sometimes, I suspect, we spend too much time polling and not enough pushing. The Trappist monk Thomas Merton reminds us that we can think too much about getting it right, about covering all our bases. Let us, therefore, he suggests, learn to pass from one imperfect activity to another, without worrying too much about what we're missing. It is true that we make many mistakes, but the biggest of them all is to be surprised by them, as if we had some hope of never making any." End of quote. The straight lines in our resumes don't include mistakes, or the chaos, or the difficulty. They don't include that talk with my father, nor do they detail the moments of serendipity and happenstance that bring me here to you today, and you here to me, and to all of your family and friends. My resume does not include the children I've taught, the townships of South Africa, the poverty, racism, art, and hope that I've encountered. And it certainly doesn't record the darker nights of the soul. A couple of months after I left Mississippi all those years ago, one of my friends, a fellow teacher, was killed in the house that we'd shared by a young man everybody knew, a young man with no job, on drugs, looking to steal a few things. My friend Amy's gone. That teen is now an older man, locked up for life. But the poverty remains. The school system is a mess. Kids still die in ponds and rivers because they've not been taught to swim. Rural poverty is so prevalent in America, but it's rarely in the news. It hides in the Appalachians, across fields, and in trailers at the end of long dirt driveways. 
I'm not here with answers. A few of my own students each year choose to teach in places like rural Alabama, Mississippi, and West Virginia, and we talk about how to get rural education back on our national agenda. But we don't know. Each of you, however, has the potential to find a few answers as you inch along. You are already travelers, volunteers, athletes, scholars, scientists, musicians, artists, and educators. You've presented your scholarship here on campus and in political arenas. You've joined struggles, built houses, made paper, danced with professional companies. You have transformed your local communities, even as you've joined the, the global community in various ventures. Hold on to all of that. And by all means, continue to be extraordinary. Effect good, fight injustice. Changes will come in Washington, D.C., in a science laboratory, in a fifth grade classroom, perhaps in a conversation at a grocery store. The most simple acts, teaching a child to swim, driving a meal to somebody who can't get out, donating books, money, and time to a library, these countless small gestures can have profound effect. But don't expect to predict those outcomes, to quantify all of your performances ahead of time. <clears throat> the, to my mind, exquisite 19th century writer George Eliot focused her novel Middlemarch on the story of a young woman named Dorothea, an ardent thinker and doer who was roughly the same age that all of you are now. I don't want to spoil those 800 plus pages for you. Some of you might have some time on your hands soon. So I will just share part of the final sentence with you. Quote, the effect of her being on those around her was incalculably diffusive, for the growing good of the world is partly dependent on unhistoric acts. For the growing good of the world is partly dependent on unhistoric acts. End of quote. Yes, life demands that each of you, me, each of us calculates, that we strategize, that we strive, Yet at the same time, I've learned again and again, and both Emerson and Eliot seem to concur, that we simply can't predict the effects of our unhistoric, unrecorded, everyday deeds. And in fact, if we try to add them all up, if we get lost in spectacles of performance, if we worry too much about missing the right path, we might well get pinned down. <clears throat> now, my six-year-old Nolan, if he were here today, right now, would interrupt at this point and tell me to stop, that I tend to talk a lot, and that really it's not just okay, but often best to just enjoy the story, to bask in the pleasure of the text. So as you celebrate today, and go forward tomorrow. I urge you to return frequently and freely to your earliest pleasures, the stash of materials and memories that will feed each of you tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Embrace the caterpillar and its imperfections in yourselves, in those you will mentor, and in your loved ones. And as you wake up tomorrow morning, perhaps a little weary from today's festivities, take the lesson of the caterpillar with you. The next day was Sunday again. The caterpillar ate through one nice green leaf, and after that, she felt much better. Thank you.
I am privileged to introduce today's student speaker, Emily Bina. <laughs> Emily is a communication major from New Brighton, Minnesota. While at the College of St. Benedict, her activities both on and off the campus completely paralleled her liberal arts education. She was on St. Ben's Senate her first year and her sophomore year. She received a College of St. Benedict Jackson Fellowship following her sophomore year, which enabled her to intern with the Midday Show on Minnesota Public Radio. Since then, Emily has interned at both the Republican and Democratic National Conventions and with Twin Cities Public Television. Last year, Emily spent one semester studying in South Africa and this year, she traveled to Nepal, where she co-directed a student-run nonprofit team as they filmed a documentary on women's empowerment. Please join me in welcoming Emily with a round of applause. First of all, thank you so much. This is <clears throat> absolutely humbling. And I'm going to go off the script a little, which they're probably all immediately worried about. But I have to tell you this story. This morning, my niece, she's three years old, um, was asked by my older brother, what does graduation mean? And Ellie said, it means have fun. <laughs> so if nothing else, if you, if you fall asleep for the rest of this, Ellie says, have fun. But really, thank you so much. And Laura, welcome back. Thank you for such an inspiring speech. Thank you to the Board of Trustees, President Benninger, the party platform, administration and staff for being steadfast beacons of support. Thank you to the professors who have been indescribably challenging and encouraging. And to my fellow beautiful classmates who have perhaps, above all, been allies and advice givers both when homework needed to be finished and when it needed to be avoided. But above all, a thousand thank yous to our biggest fans, our families and loved ones. To the people sitting in the very back row, cameras already up to their eye, in bittersweet anticipation for their loved ones' imminent walk across this short stage. Thank you for being our proudest and most loving enthusiasts. We truly could not have done it without your unending and <clears throat> financial support. <laughs> and a special thanks to my mom and dad and to those of similar generosity for letting me move back in when the glitter of graduation finally stops falling. <laughs> Four very short years ago, we started here, our lanyards hanging stylishly around our necks an almost tangible desperation to make great friends fast, only appropriate because everyone was desperate to make great friends fast. Luckily, we all picked St. Ben's, a place teeming with energy and encouragement and enthusiasm, a place rich with community, a place we've come to call home with friends we've come to call family. And not that we need the reminder, but becoming a Benny has proven to be a deeper and more intimate experience than we ever could have imagined. It meant we'd write overwhelming research papers, buy big blank canvases and fill them with color, Hypoth hypothesize, analyze, and theorize until we couldn't, and then wait patiently until we turn 21, arms folded across our laps, and relax with a beer and a friend. We let this school change us, soak into us, and become a deep and resonating part of why we are who we are. And our senior year has been one of almost exhausting discernment and reflection. What are you doing after you graduate? Where are you going? How, where are you living? How big? How fast? How much? Of course, the answer to these questions are varying. Some of us have taken jobs at major corporations, 
or committed to volunteering or teaching for a few years. Some are traveling the world for work or fun or adventure, and others, like me, just really want to reconnect with their parents. Needless to say, we have succeeded, evidenced perfectly, by the rows and rows of women ready to graduate with majors and minors and plans and ambitions and dreams and excitement of every kind. Which makes sense. Four very short years ago, we were warned, you will be successful. We were told we were powerful and competent and capable, that we were activists and athletes, global citizens and local leaders. And somewhere along the way, we started to believe it. But by now we know this is true, and I don't think you asked me to speak today to remind you of our past and future successes. So I won't. Instead, I'll remind you of something we've learned here that, as Laura already pointed out, might not manifest on a resume or in a job interview. A writing professor of mine once described short stories as straight, horizontal lines. They make sense trotting appropriately toward a chronological finish. There's a beginning at the beginning and an end at the end. Poetry, she said, poetry was like taking a tiny dot, a tiny moment on that horizontal line and shooting straight upward, perfectly perpendicular, perfectly vertical. And that image has stuck with me, particularly as we print prepare to transition out of living here, out of living with friends, out of taking classes, out of being a student here. Because certainly college went in that order. There was a beginning at the beginning, and now, here, an end at the end. But until we recognize the poetry of our time here, where we lived vertically, where we wrote our poems, describing our time at CSB is woefully incomplete. So maybe it was staying up all night with your new roommates freshman year. Or maybe it was staying up with your roommates all night last night, hoping against all odds that this day might last longer than 24 hours. Maybe it was the concerts and the crushes and the chapel walks. Maybe it was the realization that you could still withdraw from OCHEM and there was time to be an English major. Maybe a poem came out of storming the Johnny football field your senior year, only to obediently turn around and wait two endless seconds before restorming the Johnny football field your senior year. Maybe it was barefoot walks to the St. Joe Farmer's Market or intramural championships finished with a juvenile and yet so appropriate trip to Dairy Queen. Maybe it was grabbing a frisbee and a blanket on that first nice day of spring and laying until your cheeks turned pink. Or maybe your poems were written when, your feet, when you left campus, when your feet moved across beaches and cobblestone roads around the world, when you had your first proud conversation in a completely different la language, only to Skype your parents immediately and tell them all about it in English, <laughs> when you rode elephants and trolleys and surfboards, when you realized that this world is so much more than your oyster, when it became your castle, your clouds, your fields of green grass. Or maybe your last four years here have turned into a string of poems, a giant symphony of tiny moments. And here we are, in the midst of your poetic crescendo, at the peak of that vertical point on a horizontal line. But fear not because your time at St. Ben's has only perfected your skills as a poet. Look faithfully forward at the tiny moments you're about to live. When you hang that last picture in your apartment and it's in uniquely and immaculately yours. When you finally meet him or her and life is suddenly filled with companionship. When you encourage your daughters or nieces to go to St. Ben's because you'll realize the only way to explain your experience here is to try desperately and diligently to share it. So that's what I'll do, I'll try to share it. I'd like to give you a poem by a woman named Wendy Cope to serve as a reminder that our existence is short and fragile, but filled with unlimited love and possibilities for poetry. It's called 
the orange, and it goes like this. At lunchtime, I bought a huge orange. The size of it made us all laugh. I peeled it with I peeled it and shared it with Robert and Dave. They got quarters and I had a half. And that orange it made me so happy, as ordinary things often do. Just lately, the shopping, a walk in the park. This is peace and contentment. It's new. The rest of the day was quite easy. I did all the jobs on my list and enjoyed them and had some time over. I love you. I'm glad I exist. <laughs> to the graduating class of 2011, I love you and I am so glad that we have existed in this place here together. I would be mistaken if I didn't say thank you again for asking me to speak. I fell in love with this school four years ago, like all of you, and I'm honored and humbled to try and articulate that love for all of us today. But the truth is, a year from now, five years from now, you might not remember the name of the student who spoke at your graduation, or maybe even what she said. My hope, above all, is that when your children and grandchildren, your future friends and coworkers, ask about your college experience, you can say it was a grand poem, perfectly crescendoed, and that you didn't just commence, you reflected. You didn't just commence, you celebrated. You didn't just commence, you stood up, a vertical line, and you danced. Hit it! Graduates, live a vertical life, and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. Okay. Today's program... <laughs> today's program lists 486 candidates for the baccalaureate degree. The College of St. Benedict is happy to recognize these degree candidates. It is understood that the appropriate degrees are earned by the candidates who successfully complete all requirements for that degree by the end of the scholastic year. Will the candidates for the degrees please rise? Please rise. <laughs> Dr. Marianne Benninger, President of the College of St. Benedict. These students are now presented to you for conferral of the appropriate degrees. On the recommendation of the faculty of the College of St. Benedict and St. John's University, and by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the College of St. Benedict, I confer upon those graduates whose name appear in the commencement program the appropriate Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science degrees indicated with all the attendance, rights, and privileges of which the degrees to be given to them shall be forever the testimony. Now I ask Dr. Joe Desjardins, Vice Provost, to read the names of our candidates for degrees. And may I ask the audience to please hold your applause until all the graduates have received their degrees. Candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts with honors Agrigia Cum Laude, 
Kelsey Christine Daly. Catherine Grace Jefferson, Phi Beta Kappa. Angela Marie Mathis, All College Honors, Phi Beta Kappa. Brianna Catherine Ricci, All College Honors, Phi Beta Kappa. Haley Lynn Wyseth, Phi Beta Kappa, Delta Epsilon Sigma. Candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts with Honors, Summa Cum Laude. Caitlin May Andreessen, Distinction in Psychology, Phi Beta Kappa, Delta Epsilon Sigma. Megan Elizabeth Barrett, Delta Epsilon Sigma. Courtney Lynn Bonna. Marie Elizabeth Boo, Phi Beta Kappa, Delta Epsilon Sigma. Andrea K. Brandt, All College Honors. Katie Colleen Brown, Distinction in Psychology, Phi Beta Kappa. Christina Ann DeMuth, Distinction in Nutrition and Psychology, Phi Beta Kappa, Delta Epsilon Sigma. Rachel Elise Doles, All College Honors, Distinction in Applied Physics, Phi Beta Kappa. Lindsay Jo Furman, Phi Beta Kappa, Delta Epsilon Sigma. Megan Marie Gensler, Delta Epsilon Sigma. Christina Marie Griffith, Catherine Marie Hellman, All College Honors, Phi Beta Kappa. Michelle Catherine Horn. Billy Jean Klein, Phi Beta Kappa. Sarah Elaine Ladd Coquella, Distinction in Chemistry and Mathematics, Phi Beta Kappa, Delta Epsilon Sigma. Melanie Ray Lindell, Delta Epsilon Sigma. Lisa Christine Locker, Delta Epsilon Sigma. Nicole Ann Maslowski. Allison Ann Madison, Phi Beta Kappa. Molly Jean McCabe. Carla May McGrain, Delta Epsilon Sigma. Melanie Ann Meeson, All College Honors, Phi Beta Kappa, Delta Epsilon Sigma. Stacy Marie Monroe, Delta Epsilon Sigma. Laura Catherine Murray, Phi Beta Kappa, Delta Epsilon Sigma. Kathleen Marie Omerza. Britta Margaret Thielen, All College Honors, Distinction in English, Phi Beta Kappa. Jacqueline Netta Tullock, All College Honors, Phi Beta Kappa, Delta Epsilon Sigma. Carolyn Marie Vandelek. <laughs> Lindsay Nicole Williams, Phi Beta Kappa, Delta Epsilon Sigma. Beatrice Lucy Zovich, All College Honors, Delta Epsilon Sigma. Candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts with Honors, Magna Cum Laude. Ashley Christine Egan. <laughs> Kelly Jo Allen. Emily Joy Anderman, Delta Epsilon Sigma. Laura Elizabeth Anderson. Megan Ann Atkinson. Sage Autumn Baker Leitz. Phi Beta Kappa. Hannah Marie Balda, Phi Beta Kappa. Jennifer Ann Burkhofer, Phi Beta Kappa. Catherine Elizabeth Bame, Distinction in English. Chloe Brianna Briggs. Megan Elizabeth Bierman. Emily Jane Carlson, Phi Beta Kappa. Nadia Lynn Christensen. Courtney Marie Christensen, All College Honors. Caitlin Marie Corman, Phi Beta Kappa. 
Heidi Ann Donnelly. Kayla Marie Eberhardt, Phi Beta Kappa. Kirsten Bonnie Foshing. Roxanne Carol Franta, Phi Beta Kappa. Heather Renee Gilland, All College Honors. Kendra Jean Hilmerson. Anna Jean Hashen. Catherine Elizabeth Holzer. Alyssa Jean Husby. Katia Marie Caraz, Phi Beta Kappa. Megan Mary Kelly, Phi Beta Kappa. Laura Elizabeth Kraske, Phi Beta Kappa. Lindsay Elizabeth Krause, Distinction in Political Science. <laughs> Erica Lynn Matanak, All College Honors, Phi Beta Kappa. Caitlin Ann Matson. Brittany Elaine Meyer. Alicia Marie Muckenhern. Hannah Mary Nelson, Phi Beta Kappa. Laurie Ray Nonner, Phi Beta Kappa. Jessica Elizabeth Normand. Megan Elizabeth Peterson, All College Honors, Distinction in Psychology. Molly Lynn Peterson. Maggie Marie Rassier. Kristen Marie Reinsvold, All College Honors, Distinction in Mathematics and Phi Beta Kappa. Lauren Marie Rice. Abby Jane Richardson, Phi Beta Kappa. Sarah Rose Schwalbach. Anna Elena Seibert. Rachel Lynn Sawyer, Phi Beta Kappa. Stephanie Ann Seymour. Phi Beta Kappa, Delta Epsilon Sigma. Leah Marie Shanley. Sydney Alina Solberg. Amanda Jean Spurl, Phi Beta Kappa. Stephanie Ann Tierbold. Logan Page Thompson, Phi Beta Kappa. Kelsey Jo Talkelson. Wesley Janine Waters, Phi Beta Kappa, Delta Epsilon Sigma. Ashley Lynn Weinhandel, All College Honors, Distinction in Hispanic Studies. Lindsay Ray Wimmer, Phi Beta Kappa. Tiana Monique Whitus. Candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts with Honors Cum Laude, Emily Hines Bina. Catherine Marie Corkin. Catherine Jane Dickinson, All College Honors, Phi Beta Kappa. Madeline Ann Dragich, Phi Beta Kappa. Elizabeth Ann Dubay. Michaela Johanna Foley. Sarah Crystal Ghostman. Jana Renee Grasick, Phi Beta Kappa. Amanda Marie Grittner. Claire Rose Hahn. 
Elizabeth Janine Hanslick. Mallory Elizabeth Hines. Catherine Nicole Howell. Betsy Jo Hutchinson. Catherine Ann Kennefick, Distinction in Psychology. Rebecca Ann Klein. Nina Catherine Kohler. Karen Marie Kudrina. Ann Marie Locker. Molly Louise Land. Elizabeth Marie Larson. Jamie Ann Lewinsky. Sarah Taylor Mahold. Emily Jane Masters. Molly Marie McMahon. Krista Lee Mueller. Margaret Mary Niebuhr. Kathleen Rose O'Loughlin. Emily Therese Osowski. Rachel Jean Peterson, All College Honors. Shannon Elizabeth Preston. Emily June Rasier. Megan Ann Reinert. Kate Elizabeth Reichert. Hattie Catherine Ruckheim. Jessica Landry Schmall. Caitlin Ann Schwartz. Jennifer Lynn Schwope. Catherine Marie Sheehan. Maria Gail Sorensen. Sarah Elizabeth Sorensen. Samantha Ray Steele. Kelly Marie Sunder. Lydia Marlene Swift. Marie Catherine Walmsley. Alora Ann Walterman. Zhang Wang. Amy Colleen William, Phi Beta Kappa. Mackenzie Lee Weidert. Catherine Elizabeth Walnick. Amber Ray Warts. Victoria Lynn Yamri. Candidate for the degree of Bachelor of Science with honors Agrija Cum Laude, Bethany Lynn Notch. Candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science with honors Summa Cum Laude, Kaya Elizabeth Lundeen. Margaret Elizabeth Plog. Emily Ann Rood. Jennifer Marie Eaker. Candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science with honors magna cum laude. Kelly Colleen Blackley. Heather Ann Block. Katara Joe Dockendorf. Elizabeth Ann Frerichs. Jacqueline K. Imdek. 
Monica Jane Krekelberg. Haley Marie Pearson. Stephanie May Reverman. Mona Lily Shirazi. Aaron Hanlon Skluzacek. Candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science, cum laude, Amy Beth Eisenshank. Catherine Lynn Hovel. Alicia Catherine Pissick. Alexa Ann Redfield. Anne Catherine Ritchie. Courtney June St. Aubin. Alicia Ann Thiel. Megan E. Wolf. Candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Maria Marie Alkair. Laura Catherine Althoff. Martha Elizabeth Anderson. Alejandra Andrade. Alyssa Marie Arabaji. Stephanie Lynn Aral. Rebecca Elizabeth Arnholt. Stacy Lynn Athman. Emily Marie Backus. Melissa Marie Baylitz. Ashley Lynn Ballman. Greta Rose Bartolome. Renee Jean Bartouche. McKenna Claire Belgard. Allison Marie Bennis. Bethany Therese Baniak. Jennifer Rose Benoit. Nora Bjornberg Behrens. Maggie Pepka Berg. Anna Marie Bergstrom. Caitlin Louise Bauer. Nicole Marie Biersbach. Marty Marie Billman, All College Honors Distinction in Chemistry. Deanna Alicia Blanco. Catherine Asha Bloom. Elise Maria Baum. Catherine Amanda Bolin. Gabrielle Emily Borba. Caitlin Dorothy Boris. Devin Kathleen Bolin. Anne Kathleen Bracken. Carly Mae Bregelman. Lisa Suzanne Brand. Lauren Judith Brandis. Kelly Marie Brandon. Solana Michelle Brinkman. Blair Elizabeth Brookman. 
Kellyanne Broughton, Kali Ann Murad Brown, Caitlin Elizabeth Brown, Michelle Joy Brunick, Caitlin Marie Brutger, Amanda Ann Buckner, Margaret Susan Burbach, Anna Nicole Bergeson, Colleen Nicole Caffrey, Laura Johanna Canton, Ann Elizabeth Carney, Sopan Tari Chin, Amanda Lauren Chuva, Christina Marie Sibuzar, Britta Nicole Clark, Jenna Catherine Clark, Tara Lynn Cochran, Sierra Marie Commers, Erin Elizabeth Connolly, Anna Kathleen Conzemius, Carolyn Beth Cooper, Maud Sheena Cooper, Marissa Beatrice Cruz Garcia, Megan Angelica Curry, Jillian Lee Delayden, Kimberly Ann Deloyer, Faith Kelly Damon, Emily Ann Dock, Bernice Mayeda David, Allison Elizabeth Davis, Lauren Michelle Day, Katrina Mavis Deal, Ellen Marie Damer, Distinction in Psychology, Laura Ann Deal, Karen Eileen Dettel, Alexandra Henkels Deemer, Emily Ann Dobish, Sarah Ann Dewey, Kate Joan Dullinger, Abby Marie Dunham, Ellery Margaret Egremont, Cara Jean Ellert, Kelsey Young Elishevsky, Lauren Mary Erickson, Kimberly Ann Escuri, Katie Joy Estrom, <laughs> Renee Elizabeth Farquharson, Paige Marie Feitinger,
Rachel Marie Fenske. Jessica Lee Florick, All College Honors. Danielle Elizabeth Fluke. Brianna Marie Foley. Kayla Renee Fulmer. Randy Joyce Formanek. Jessica Lee Forster. Sarah Laureen Freed. Maria Lou Gans. Kira Therese Garrett. Kaylee Marie Gower. Kelly Harriet Giebel. Meredith McKay Godsell. Courtney Ray Gaynor. Jeanette Linda Godringer. Marin Christine Gottnick. Allison May Gressbach. Anna Marie Gurton. <laughs> Melissa Ann Gerwitz. Megan Elizabeth Haar. Simone Nicole Heider. Ari Alessandra Hamilton. Carissa Beth Hancock. Catherine Elizabeth Hansen. Janessa Ann Harron. Emily Ann Hart. Brittany Rose Helmbreck. Abby Marie Helmanen. Kristen Marie Hurgis. Yasmeri Rosa Hernandez. Martha Louise Haymans. Catherine Laurelyn Curley Hoagland. Allison Marie Homestad, Distinction in Psychology. Allison Nicole Hoover. Kylie Elizabeth Huther. Megan Cecilia Hughes. Elizabeth Marie Humbert. Sara Flynn Hupperts. Rachel Catherine Indahar. Ashley Ann Irons. Tanika Ann Jacobson. Katie Lynn Jedlicka. Catherine Ann Jensen. Samantha Jolene Jessen. Emily Ann Jodel. Catherine Gallowitz Johnson. Lauren Marie Johnson. 
Mackenzie Nicole Johnson, Tara Lynn Johnson, Emily Therese Jonas, Martha Therese Kempfer, Rachel Ann Kalaveg, Anna Elizabeth Colmy, Lauren Amber Camper, Julie Ann Carkella, Danielle Therese Karp, Emily Ann Kastner, Brianna Michelle Kautz, Shante Ann Keen, Megan Elizabeth Kelsey, L. Geneva Kern, Sarah Marie Kingston, All College Honors, Melissa Jo Kirchner, Megan McCaffrey Kanopic, Samantha Jean Keck, Amanda Lynn Kaler, Barbara Ann Koenig, Kimberly Michelle Kolstad, Melinda Maria Karluski, Stephanie Ann Cortan, Leah Marie Cosmerl, Catherine Ann Krecky, Tamara Lee Krieger, Jenna Marie Kuzmarzik, Alyssa Marie Kubesh, Renee Christina Kirpiers, Lauren Shaw Kwasnitska, Micheline Elise Lake, Catherine Marie Lambert, Melinda Marie Lawson, Megan Renee Leah, Diana Julie, Pa Nia Lee, Kelsey Marie Lennertz, Miranda Holly Lipinski, Megan Marie Lichter, Alexandra Erin Lund, All College Honors, Delaney Elizabeth Lundeen, Melinda May Madeira, Jane Adele Mahold, Amanda Marie Martin, Kerry Elizabeth Maurer, Sarah Christine Mayer, Katie Allison McCabe, Kelly Teresa McCormick, Lori Ann McDonald, Nicole Ann Myers, Christine Elizabeth Melody, Catherine Ann Merkley, Grace Shields Mevison, 
Abby Elise Meyer, Amber Marie Middendorf, Mary Catherine Moore, Allison Rose Musio, Marina Narich, Abby Louise Nijbauer, Erica Ellen Nelson, Carrie Lynn Nelson, Julia Marie Nutkins, Emily Elizabeth Nevis, Yuri Nishishigaki, Elena Stephanie Noel, Molly Helen Noel, Lacey Ann Noon, Madeline Alaska North, Brittany Leah Nocell, Samantha Jane Novitsky, Danae Adeltis O'Brien, Nicole Diane Offerdahl, Elizabeth L. Oliveri, Abby Lynn Olson, Jenny Ann Olson, Shannon Rose O'Neill, Samantha Lee Osborne, Melanie Ann Ostertag, Kylie Jo Pomeschino, Junel Pedro, Lauren Elizabeth Peeler, Alyssa Ray Pearson, Distinction in English, Rachel Marie Peltier, Amanda Lee Peters, Ambria Christine Farr, Fuan Pham, Linda Sokteri Pham, Sok Petsimone, Lisa Ann Pitts, Caitlin Renee Plute, Kayla Marie Poussant, Sydney Cadence Rachel, Emily Marie Reinert, Holly Elizabeth Reinking, Katrina Ray Reeker, Britta Ann Riley. Chelsea Ray Roberge, Margaret Ann Rothstein, Cassidy Elizabeth Rupp, Megan Maureen Rashavi, Bridget LeMay Saladin. Tia Bree Salo, Catherine Jean Sand, Catherine Marie Sauer, Rose Louise Suvi, Mackenzie Gail Sawyer, Cassandra Lynn Scherer. 
Andrea Elizabeth Shebe. Maya Lauren Schmelzer. Krista Lynn Schmidt. Courtney Ann Schmidt. Brianna Marie Schneider. Rebecca Jean Schneider. Caitlin Siobhan Schnettler. Kaylee Jo Schumacher. Ellen Mary Schwartzbauer. Kristen May Sentner. Kathleen Lily Sensky. Laura O'Neill Sienko. Jessica Marie Simons. Sarah Burns Skolte. Stacy Marie Scrock. Kayla Talea Smith. Caitlin Irene Sobraski. Abigail Carol Spaniel. Catherine Mary Spirides. Stacy May Ellen Standall. Amy Elizabeth Stifter. Ashley Marie Staninsky. Schnerzina Subic. Kelly Kathleen Suter. Ashley Laurel Sweeting. Yuzu Take. Elizabeth Ann Tamman. Carrie Jo Teagan. Kao Nao Tao. Maya Yia Tao. Jane Caroline Tibold. Stacy Marie Thielen. Sean Ashley Thurston. Cassandra Joan Truman. Kelsey Marie Cheetah. Jacqueline Marie Turner. Jenna Marie Utzinger. Brittany K. Vaplon. Laura Yannett Vergen. Nicole Marie Vest. Katie Marie Vogel. Ashley Ann Vogt. Allison Mary Wagner. Hannah Elizabeth Beaton Walsh. Mallory Jean Wander. Kayla Marie Ward. Rachel Naomi Watson, All College Honors. Joelle Elizabeth Waitashek. Amanda Dolores Wesley. Jennifer Ann Wesser. Erin Elaine Weiss. 
Michelle Bozana Vilchuk. Laura Colleen Wildenborg. Maria Claire Wilcom. Catherine Ann Winchittle. Rachel Marie Wolf. Maya Chong Zhang. Shi Zhang. Zua Yang. Allison Lee Youngers. Emily Jean Zamponia. Hong Zhang. Stacy Rose Zimmerman. Candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science, Nicole Leanne Barron. Courtney Fish Bennett. Michelle Marie Kristen. Lisa Maureen Conrude. Catherine Irene Doring. Amy Elizabeth Garmaker. Cassandra Marie Harrington. Julianne Marie Heinen. Leandra Joanne Hofert. Chelsea Lee Larson. Jessica Lynn Malt. Molly May Miller. Ashley Rose Quam. Emily Renee Spiegeler. Alyssa Brianna Stearns. Natalie Alice Sultzi. Andrea Eve Swenson. Bethany Erin Waletsko. Please join me in congratulating College of St. Benedict's class of 2011. The graduates of the class of 2011, again I say congratulations. <laughs> My name is Judy Zimmer. I'm the president-elect of the St. Ben's Alumni Board. Unfortunately, Tanya Dozell, current president, was unable to join us today. I'm excited to officially welcome you to the Alumni Association. This association began over 90 years ago and today includes 20,000 incredible women from throughout the United States and around the world. This indeed is the Benny Network. It's a vibrant and dynamic association. It's all about relationships with our sister alumni, women who are our colleagues, mentors, and our closest friends. 
St. Ben's women have so many things in common. We have a degree from the number one Catholic liberal arts college for women in the country. We describe ourselves as strong, spiritual, smart, resilient, bold, confident, adventurous, and innovative. We are talented, we are compassionate, and we make a positive difference wherever we go. We share a love for this place, founded by the Sisters of St. Benedict, remarkable women in their own right. With their rich tradition and pioneering spirit to nurture us, you and I are destined to make a difference in the communities where we live and work. I invite you to come back to campus often, because this will always be your home. But you should also know that we get together all the time whenever and wherever we can. We are everywhere, in this room, throughout Minnesota, around the country, and in every corner of the globe. It was nearly 25 years ago since I was sitting where you are now, patiently waiting for this ceremony to be over. But I was also feeling just a little anxious about trading the St. Ben's world for the real world. Well, trust me, you will be just fine. I'm excited to watch your futures unfold and look forward to hearing of your many accomplishments. Congratulations to all of you and welcome to the Benny Network and the Alumni Association. Gracious God, throughout their years on this campus of the College of St. Benedict and St. Benedict's Monastery, these young women have learned and witnessed Christian, Catholic, Benedictine values. Now we ask that they will be bearers and receivers of these values wherever they go. May they be aware of God's loving presence in all the circumstances of their lives, the ordinary and the extraordinary, the joyful and the sorrowful, in all the people they encounter and in the earth they inhabit. May they form community wherever they live and wherever they work, and may they always be surrounded by communities that support them, bless and challenge them. May they be blessed with work that draws on their knowledge and creativity that is useful to the world and of service to God's people. May they receive hospitality at home and away from home, and whether at home or away, may they always receive others as if they were Christ, especially the sick, the homeless, the immigrant, the poor, the troubled, and the lonely. May they never turn away when someone needs their love. May they recognize injustice in all of the blatant and insidious ways in which it manifests itself. And may they be tireless in promoting justice at every level of society. May they listen with the ear of their heart to all the ways in which you speak to them, God, so that they may know your deepest desire for them especially at this moment of transition from college to the rest of their lives. May they practice moderation and seek balance in prayer, work, leisure, and possessions. May they have enough laughter, enough fun, enough friends, enough solitude, enough work, enough to eat, 
and enough to share with others, but not so much of anything material that it distracts them from the things of the heart. May they strive for peace in their hearts with you, their loving creator, and with all their sisters and brothers who make up the human race. May they offer and receive forgiveness. May they prefer reconciliation to revenge. May they be confident of your mercy and so be merciful to others. May they be received with respect in all the stages of their lives and may they respect all people and pursue what is best for the common good of all. May they have stability of heart and of faith. May they have a sense of mission in their lives. May they be rooted in these values and recall them in times of trouble. May they gaze lovingly on your creation and care for it with courage and compassion. May they regard the whole universe and their small place within it as sacred. May they, like Saint Benedict, see the whole world in a single ray of light and breathe a blessing on it. And finally, may God bring these women and all of us together again in eternal life. Amen.